so many shows last year, man, my spare work, now they can't. Alright guys, welcome to, um, the Celtic Mind episode 24. I checked that before we started recording, uh, just to be sure. Um, well, let goes back to the podcast. You've been on it, obviously, yeah, most of the time, yeah, most of the uh, episodes. Um, today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Aberdeen performance. Mainly, there's a real Hatete is close to joining Celtic. That'll be Ange's oh, first. Um, before we get into, like, you know, the proper serious stuff we talk about in this podcast, have you seen the video of Yota trying to iron through? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's this. too funny, man. I'll try and get the clip, guys, but please check it out on Celtic socials. It's too funny. It's absolutely too it's funny. To be fair, um, obviously he's not Scottish and he thought it was alcohol and oh, it's too funny. But he doesn't like it anyway. But um, before we get it, guys, <laughs> um, please subscribe, like, and share all the videos. Out. This important channel has been excellent. You'll, some the guy, the support has been great because like they love the match day vlog, so uh, we'll keep them going. Um, but I found out this today, guys, um, just about lunchtime today. Ange Ball is number one through all the leagues. Most ball circulation across 40 leagues worldwide. Celtic are first with 12.8 kilometres. Ange Postcoglu has certainly turned Celtic into a passing kings of the world. They're above like a Ajax, Bayern Munich, Manchester City, Liverpool, Barcelona. I mean, come on. I've got my eyes on you. And fuzz. <laughs> um, more into the um the podcast today, guys. We're also going to discuss, obviously, a wee bit about. We're going to touch on a wee bit about Leverkusen defeat. Where that leaves us going into the Conference League knockouts. The Aberdeen victory, potentially the first time in the January transfer window with Rio Hattati. Um, since you know, obviously, 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 obviously we're not always obviously old enough. Um. But like you know, in Germany and stuff like other countries, like you know, like to drink, like especially Germany, you know, yeah. you can, yeah. We're not going to talk a lot about that, but like you know, in your opinion, I know obviously we're just fourteen, but you know, what I mean, should I, it would probably just cause chaos again. But like in a way, I think you can just see how Germany work it nicely. You know, yeah. for older people, they must. Oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because he's left back, he also plays left wing midfield and attacking midfield. Yeah. And, and 25, I mean 29 matches, he's got 5 goals and 2 assists. There you go. Uh, we'll talk, we're going to talk about him first, guys, and obviously throughout the podcast, we're going to talk about Celtic Hearts on Thursday and obviously your guys' questions on Twitter. Um, So let's get to Rio Hitati, if I can oh, find. Sorry, and you can be quiet. Here we go. He won't. So Rio Itati, I found out this this morning, has decided that he wants to join Celtic. It's not confirmed yet, but this is, you know, highly reported yeah. by high journalists. That he wants to join Celtic in the January transfer window with his contract set to run out in Japan. Um, the two-time J-League title winner has already made his mind up that he wants to join fellow uh, man himself, Kyogo Furuhashi at Parkhead. Um, the journalist is reporting that Celtic are moving quickly to try and bring the player in for January 2nd's clash with Rangers, where he could make his debut. Uh, the journalist claimed that Celtic have already thrashed out terms with the player and doesn't believe um, the club front tail, that's the last name, will stop him from joining up with the Hoops early. The J League ca campaign concludes on Jan uh, December 4th, so I'll, get, I'll let you get your talks on that first. You know, Is that a good sign for Celtic? Coverage? Yeah. Yeah. Attacking mid coverage? Yeah. M midfield coverage? Yeah. Yeah. Left wing coverage? Yeah. You're basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he plays the entire left side. He's an upgrade on McCarthy. Definitely. He's can get a break. Yeah. Turnbull, he's been off the pace a bit, so he might end up with a slight, you know. He, yeah. might be, he might be urged to kick on with some competition. Yeah, definitely need competition there in the midfield. Because, you know, if you look at it, McCarthy got got a four-year contract. I mean, that's yeah. just like winning 500 quid at the bingo for McCarthy. You're like, oh, yeah, dancer, you know. That's, I, that's still I, that's so, mind-blowing for me. So my pre-rating of Hatate is a 7.5. Yeah. He's a, he's a decent player, although it should be said, he's never like 
massively impressed because he's not been in a big league. Yeah. He's able to be in that one club. It's probably. So I think. Oh, you also honest. He'll be at like you know equal level here. Yeah. So. It's yeah. Eight point. It's an eight out of ten for me with Celtic team how he does get. Yeah, I think it's mainly going to be a bit like, you know, the way Kyogo came in. I mean, obviously a few yeah. people, like Iniesta, and there's Iniesta, obviously a famous Barcelona player, obviously played alongside of me. He probably basically, you know, said this guy's a, a player here. So, you know, we haven't seen much of this guy as well. Whereas he comes in, make the same impact as Kyogo is another thing. I think because yeah. he's, you know, different positions. I think Ange is going to play him, you know, a McCarthy position because, you know, this guy's young. You know, you can... Yeah. This guy's more, you know, focused. He can play up the speed with this kind of, you know, the Ange ball. Um, I think, you know, I wouldn't throw him in as reports are saying that they can, they're can. they trying to get him in for the January 2nd, but I would try to... Like, if there's injuries there, this guy's got experience. Play them there, yeah. but... If Roderick's there, uh, McGregor and Turnbull's fit for the match in January, play them, because... No, honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Nakati play over Turnbull so far. Yeah. Because Turnbull just hasn't shown yeah, he's just, that he's been good this season. I think he's I can, been there for the ride, but he's not been there to contribute to the gaffes. Yeah, I think, you know, a couple of games maybe, yes, he's he scored he scored this season as well, a couple of screamers, I think the Murrow game he scored. But it keeps going to me, you know, he's not performed, you know, he's not showed his talent for Mullerwell. Like, you see, see when you look at Mullerwell, yeah. when he played at Mullerwell, he was fantastic. But are we going to that stage where is he a Motherwell talent only? I know he's played for him, you know, decent in the last couple of games, but yeah. you want him to perform higher. You want him to turn, yeah. as you say, gas. You know, he needs to turn the gas on every game. And I feel he t- turns it off a couple of times, really, throughout the games, uh, a couple of games, just, you know. Um, so as I was talking about, the J-League uh, campaign includes on the 4th of December, meaning Celtic's pursuit wouldn't conflict with any fixtures the club will have. Uh, they're trying to move, get get the quickly the move quickly in order to sign Hatati with the report stating that the club still needs to complete his work permit and documentation ahead of the new year. Um, he's made thirty six appearances for the club. I'm not going to pronounce the name. But I keep saying the club because you know I don't want to mess it up. A season he was involved with Japan during the twenty twenty one Olympics, where they made the semi finals been four knocked out by Spain. Um, at twenty four years age, this is something that will likely obviously. It excite the Celtic fans a bit like Kyogo. It's yet another example of the hoops going for a player who can come in and make an instant, immediate impact. You know, Ange know this league very well. A player who already, you know, has tightly winning experiences. You know what I mean? You want players like that. Yeah. Whereas, you know, McCarthy, I'm, I mean, is he, sorry if I've got this wrong here, but has he actually won a league title? I'm, I'm just, he might win it with Celtic uh, this season, but I'm not too sure. He's uh, never been in a league winning title side. Everton aren't exactly my favourites for the Premier League <laughs> in general. Yeah. So you look at it and just look at the age of McCarthy as well. Um, so this guy will be a, di- a, a different level. This guy will be something. Hopefully, anyway, you know what I mean? You've got to hope for the best. Um, yeah, a promising young player. Yeah. Well, I'm going to move on a wee bit of history, guys, just to go off the, off the transfer talk just a wee bit. Celtic tweeted this morning, Celtic have used more than 70 goalkeepers since 1888. I mean, I found that fast. I just found that... That's metal. Yeah. You think you think they would have more keepers, but when you probably look at the maths and stuff, I'm not good at maths. To be fair, though, with the age that we were using Craig Gordon and that lot up, is it that surprising that Celtic haven't always been the most... Yeah. Well... Well, it's Revolutionary move. in terms of young players and trusting them. Yeah. Well, let's move on to something that's it's not very, you know, a good matter on the podcast what I discussed today, but I felt that we had to discuss it because on Sunday um, I was heading to the game and I, felt, I was looking at my phone, you know, just looking at the te- see if the team was out. And I, I really sad, you know, a really disappointing thing again from the police again, Police Scotland. So, yeah, so- they were interrupting the food collection. Yeah, so basically, Celtic fans, anybody who wanted to give food, you know, to the food bank, park yeah. their cars out or vans, whatever, outside Celtic Park, which any fan would do going to the game. So if they get dropped off, the other person would drive away, of course, right? You get that? Yeah. So people are dropping off, they're only stopping for five minutes to drop off, say, you know, there's some food for the food bank, right? Yeah. 
and the police Scotland have the have the absolute cheek to go up and give them parking tickets. It's an, I think it's an absolute joke. Sixty pound, not only just parking tickets, sixty pound yeah. parking tickets, and it's close to Christmas. I think that's an absolute joke. I, yeah, honestly. You know, people are collecting for you know Glasgow's probably one of the world's the world, the world's poorest. You know, probably going into Christmas. Yeah, but you already know. As soon as like the police officers are struggling, they go straight to it. Yep, it's, it's shocking, absolute shocking. I think I've got a matter on it. Uh, I'm not sure I got it, but it's it's, it's a joke, honestly. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I I've got the point here. I've still got it in my head, actually. If, 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 if um, I remembered again, um, Celtic fans. Uh, so Celtic, obviously. We're doing the food bank collection. Me and my Rangers fans were playing that. Uh, Celtic Rangers were playing. Uh, Rangers were playing that day, uh, Sunday, and they sang. Obviously, if you don't know the story, Lewis Tommy Burns. Yeah. He sadly died of cancer, and um, Rangers fans had the. I know Rangers fans were always sang about Celtic, blah blah blah, right? But the fact that they had, you know, the the guts to sing about Tommy Burns is an absolute disgrace and a disgrace yeah. for a start, but. The police go charging people sixty pound to donate food to the food bank, where they don't even they, they, they don't even concern about Rangers fans. I'm not going that biased way, but you look, just look at it. Look at the yeah. the two differences. One singing about a, a Celtic player who sadly passed away of a, a, a health condition. Another Celtic yeah. fans and people like in Glasgow are helping uh, poor families in Glasgow with food. Yeah. So. Bernard Higgins right now. Get them out. Get them out. Now this is his thoughts. Do we get the people that are doing their best to help everybody that they can? Yeah. Or do we go to those people who are doing sectarian chanting? Well, not even that. Making fun of yep. somebody who's died. Yep. I know. <laughs> uh, you? That's not funny. <laughs> there yep. are rich people in Glasgow who could use money to buy that food. Why are you giving it to the poor? Basically, and I've got on a good point, Lewis. We're going to talk about Bernard Higgins because obviously Celtic, the Green Brigade, and also the all Celtic fans um, held a clear message on Sunday to the ex police Scotland commander. Basically, they sat in protest after the game, the Green Brigade, yeah. and also another uh, part of the, the Celtic uh, Park, the boys. Um, they sat after the game because, um, you know, they just wanted to tell Celtic a clear message, and I just wanted to go out there, guys, right away. I emailed the North Curve Celtic, the Green Brigade. We're taking full. We've, we've wrote our name on the, you know the, what you call it? Yeah. What you call it? I, think, I don't know. What you, you sign up, sign yeah, petition to get um, Bernard Higgins. Just as you know, everyone's behind behind um, get Bernard Higgins out because you know I've told us a wee bit about him why you you know Celtic fans don't want him in the club. Um, yeah. And you know it's 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 a clear message to the board um, over the potential point of Bernard Higgins. Um, you know, he's he's potentially getting a top senior security role at Celtic Park, which really and a, a banner actually held up really good by um, one of the sections of Celtic said, I think it was in um, something like um, health and safety hazard or something like that. I about that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, they were they were in a co- they were in a corp, uh, corp. I can't even speak. Um, oh, they were going yeah. With Higgins, if the appointment was made official, so basically, you know, the fans of uh, the fans of sport, basically, you know, you've got the, the surely the board must see this and go, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get the same amount of support, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna get the the money and the, you know what I mean? Because well, see, if Bernard, the, the brigade, you've definitely done something wrong. Yeah, because that's what we'll do. See if Bernard Higgins is appointed, Lewis. You yeah. see your numbers drop. The Green Brigade will not attend matches. I bet you, if Bernard Higgins is st- is co- is the head security role at Celtic Park, Green Brigade yeah, will I've not. Seen, like, I've seen hundreds of things in that. Yep. And my dad often knows a few people in them, and literally all you've been hearing is, "What's the point of going to matches?" Yep. If the person there is just gonna, you know. You talk about health the and safety, healthy. right? Yeah, yeah. You talk about health and safety and how like normal stewards are there to keep you safe. This guy's a health and safety hazard than himself. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I mean, it's it's our board. It'll, you know, I was watching a video and the 
you know, the AGM meeting that Celtic had, I was watching yeah. one about Bayern Munich, and they had the exact same problem. The board don't listen to the fans. Uh, they were booing. There was boos at the meeting at Bayern Munich. I mean, I thought they were, you know, the German league's kind of like, it is kind of fan-owned, isn't it? You know, in it? some clubs yeah. are fan-owned, yeah. Um, and there was boos at the meeting, and that was really surprising. The board stopped the meeting when there were still fans to discuss something about the football club. I mean, that's appalling. I mean, I... Yeah, really <sighs> to listen to them. Yeah, not run away. I think I, I think that's that going to our club as well. Need a second, I need to take a drink. Yep. Um. Well, always gets a drink. I'll go into the next point of the podcast, guys, and it's it's the same. We're going on to the match on Sunday against Aberdeen. Um. We're going to talk about obviously Scott Brown's return to Celtic Park. Barry Olds, obviously, <laughs> lovely tribute. I'm going to start with that, yeah. Lewis. Um. Got in my seat. Uh. Just in time <laughs> for the. The Bet Old Tribute, I nearly missed it. Um, obviously, they, they brought out the European Cup, the Champions League, um, as it now is called. And um, it was really nice to see it uh, because, you know, he was in the team that won it. Lisbon Lions were there as well, but his family was there as well. And they did a very yeah. th- nice thing, which they did with um, uh, Billy Meany when he died. They put the, the yeah. number 10 in the middle and they said, that's entertainment. That's one of his favourite phrases. And yeah. it was really nice to see when... The Celtic players come out. No, in fact, it was Cal McGregor and Scott Brown, one former captain, one new the Celtic captain right now. And um, they brought the Reefs, and when they brought Reefs out, uh, Bertie Old started the Celtic song because no one can sing it better than him. The man himself, he probably just started it before Glenn Derry, um, the man who wrote the Celtic, oh, sang yeah. it, sorry. Uh, so that was great to see. On the pitch, Martyrs, Jota, finish, broke the deadlock in 20 minutes. I mean, it was just so it was great to rub it in the Aberdeen fans because they were singing yeah. up until that twentieth minute mark. They were just so annoying, man. Just to rub oh, it in, it was just great. About this situation, is that you simply you ought to have faith. Yeah, basically they played that song for his goal tune. You've got to, I mean, yeah. Celtic fans might say I'm including myself. I'm not getting over because you know, end of the day, Celtic can order offer that contract to stay at Celtic Park, but see if Benfica look at us. I don't know if they will, but if Benfica fans go, you know, and Benfica see us. They might he might want to yeah. play for his home country, you know, his home kind of team, you know, his Portuguese, Benfica. Yeah. He always wanted to play for also, the first team. If I think if I'm right, which I think I am, I think he'd rather go somewhere where he's gonna get consistent playing time. Yeah. I doubt he's gonna get past Rafa. Yeah. And so I think he'll want consistent game time to get a look in for the national team. Yeah. He, I think we all know how well the German uh Portuguese national team has been performing. Yeah. So even if so, if Jota signed for Celtic permanently. I mean, he could even get called up, maybe even just to called up. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. uh, but it was I never nearly seen the penalty, Lewis. But when I looked at back in sports, seen the highlights of the game after the match when I came back, Leo Bada. So his foot's out and then he, he cuts it back in because he sees this player. He sees the player going past him in the penalty box and he dives. It's a stonewall dive from David Bates. Yeah. But the penalty is given, which is a joke because the referee's stand looking at it, but. Hell, you know, they get effort, the penalty's given, Joe Hart, sadly there's no chance, he dives the wrong way, Lewis Ferguson puts it 1-1. Um, hopefully Joe Hart, you know, he's, he's recovered well, because, you know, the first couple of minutes, like, the first four minutes into the game, Joe Hart, it's a sore one, because I think Aberdeen player's going yeah. for the same time as Joe Hart, he's down for a couple of minutes, for a minute I nearly had a heart attack, Lewis, because I saw Scott being at the side getting changed, and I was like, oh my god, we're going to see yeah. the smallest goalkeeper in the world go on this pitch. <laughs> And I was like, oh no, we're going to get hammered. But thank God, Joe Hart, he was alright. Hopefully no um, injuries after the game. They never felt anything after the game, hopefully. But he was he was spot on from there. He's been on it since that penalty. Um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, Celtic stepped up the intensity in the second half. Um, and it was a weird, it was a bizarre winner. It was an absolute bizarre winner. I thought at first, Ila Abada was throwing goal, good save from Joe Lewis. But in the end... Yeah. Johnny Hayes, former Celtic player, tries to clear it. Actually, that's off a. I told you, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Um, it yeah. kicks off a Cal McGregor's um, boot. It ends up in the back of the net. It could have gone anywhere. It ends up back in the net. It was brilliant. Uh, it was absolutely yeah. brilliant. That defeat leaves Aberdeen eighth. I mean, whew, for Aberdeen, that's. Whew. Um, it's a vital one, definitely, for, you know, Postcall's side loss, you know, because they, they put that Thursday Europe Europa League's exit behind them to ensure they did not fall far behind Rangers. Obviously, they defeated Livingston 3 1 earlier that yeah. day. Um, it was weird seeing Scott Brown again in Aberdeen shirt, still getting used to that. That was his first visit back to Parkhead 
Um, yeah. Obviously. Um, since the past were pretty old, and with the ex-skipper also both leaving a leaf uh, at the tribute. Um, but I've got to talk about Jota's goal, Lewis. I know we're probably going to run past time here, but it doesn't... We'll, we'll keep going. Um, David Turnbull's delightful chip. I want to talk about that. I know we've discussed earlier in the podcast, he needs to turn on the gas. I felt he turned it yeah. on for, for a wee bit during this game because the chip he made, it was like prime Messi. I don't know, a midfielder. Go a midfielder, prime Iniesta, go whatever you want. It's a lovely chip to Chavi. McGregor. Chavi. Um, it's a lovely pass from a uh, chip over from David Turnbull into McGregor. McGregor last the day, into Jota. And you know when Jota's got the ball just in the box, he's going to at it. It's a lovely finish. Kyogo just watches it going in the net. It's a fantastic finish from Jota. And then Once he's like, again, I know I've said this a lot, but you just you ought to have <laughs> faith in his abilities. Yep, it is, yeah. Um, and obviously, Aberdeen have the penalty. But, you know, for the first half, Lewis, I've, I've got to say, obviously McCarthy started because obviously Beetle went off injured in the Bayer Leverkusen game, which we've got on it a wee bit in a minute. Um, McCarthy in the first half looked like we had... I, I never noticed him. Like, he could have been in, he could have not been on the park, and I, I don't know. And I wouldn't have noticed because, you know, he looked invisible in the, the first half. But the second half, he turned it up a wee bit. Got a good pass to the guy. Um, I, I mean, that's what you can do at that age, you know what I mean? Just try and get whatever you can, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's the situation we're at just now. But if we can get Hatati in, a couple of our signings in January, great. That would be great, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And actually a real title charge. But um, before we go into the Bayer Leverkusen and conference stuff, Lewis, I want to talk about you told me this, this morning, Lewis. Gavin Strachan, the man with the iPad, you've seen the Christmas advert himself. Um, Following his arrival in summer, Ange Postecoglou has brought a sense of stability and at Celtic. Obviously, that was completely missing last season. Let's just go for that a second. Um, um, you know, Celtic's best playing start in Elvin was not uh, was not clear with a number of players struggling for both form and fitness. Fortunately, yeah. that obviously that's definitely changed under Postecoglou. Um, there was a fear that that would be disrupted, though, as rumours emerged that Hartlepool United were looking to bring in Gavin Strachan as their club's manager. He had represented the club during his playing career, but it appears that a Celtic coach had turned down the opportunity in order to remain um, at Parkhead. Hartlepool, somebody, um, a journalist, Alan Nixon, said Hartlepool, Gavin Stratton has turned down the move to become manager staying at Celtic. I mean... Well, I, I think I have something big to add to this. Well, we all joke on Stratton for constantly being on his iPad. And it doesn't seem as if he's doing much. The fact that he's went through Lenin and Posty Coglu without ending up being gone with Lenin shows that he must be doing something right. Yeah. Even he's... if it means he's keeping the club top of the Tetris world record. <laughs> yeah. Life. Um, but... As you say, Lucy, he's not a very fan, um, very popular yeah. figure amongst the fans. Uh, a huge part of that was almost, you know, out of his control, you know, as a, you know, Celtic finished 25 points Rangers and, you know, with him in the, you know, in the dugout, you know, it, it didn't, you know, yeah. didn't, you don't see what, it's not hard to see why calls from the supporters to replace the entire backroom staff and totally start afresh. I was in that yeah. as well. I thought, you know, we need a tire fresh. Get John Kennedy. Do you know what stuff, do you know what I just found out the other day there? The board are still considering, like later on in like in the future, they're still con- considering John Kennedy as official Celtic manager. I mean, <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, it might be just a a, re- a journal, a journalist going blah blah blah, but you never know. It's a Celtic board. We've seen it happen. Yeah. He's, he's putting. He's... Although I don't think they'll get rid of Posty Coglu. Oh no, no. Well. Unless so- something domestic happens, you know. But I don't see that happening very soon. Posty Coglu says that Celtic. Board directors should be hanged for saying shrimp on a barbie <laughs> once as any times as a joke. Um, but I'm going to go back to Aberdeen with just a second. You know, what did we learn? Obviously, when Jota click, Celtic click. You know, it's like the rest of the, like the rest, like the rest of the team. The Portuguese yeah. forward took uh, until you know, 15 minutes to get in his groove. You know, the whole team clicked. You know, as soon as Port- uh, Portuguese, you why did get? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But. Uh, uh, Jota, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know if I was getting Pochettino, but anyway, uh, yeah. Jota um, clicks, the whole team clicks. It's fantastic to see, you know, they come alive, you know. Uh, well, Jota's transfer looks um, a great business. 
the decision, the decision to recruit yeah. James McCarthy still seems a head scratcher. Even though I've discussed, you know, I've got good passes. Yeah. It's still a head scratcher for me. You know, he's thirty one, injury record in a four year contract. I mean, it cannot be argued that the midfield is producing. Um, you know, he's not he's not producing enough time on the pitch. You know, he's he's hardly on the pitch. Yeah. Never mind. Um, no, what did they say? And then I got in the Leverkusen the conference stuff. Uh, Ange said we started brightly and we had chances after their penalty. It was tight, but we upped their tempo and pace at the right moments. And I was confident that we would get the result. Um, Celtic go to... No, nope, Celtic are at home at Hearts um, on Thursday at quarter to eight. I know I'm actually vlog, guys. Make sure you tune to the channel. It's another great match. Very tough match, in fact. Um, yeah. But, Lewis, let's get on to... Um, talk my voice here, but anyway. <laughs> let's go on to Bayer Leverkusen and conference league since obviously by Leverkusen has knocked us out of the Europa League we're now in the conference league knockout stages which will be posted in February See, um, annoying. Oh, you I, I wanted to go out of conference league okay. so we can focus on the league fair that's fair yeah that's, I mean it's fair I mean I get Postco said that match you know we didn't have we're not, like, we're not uh, the thing you know the ideal situation that he wants us to be like beating yeah. these teams but you got to look at it loose we're 2-1 up right in the Leverkusen and it all goes back to depth you take those three off the whole team goes fo like Lego just falls um, so down you only know what I think should never happen in this team Callum McGregor getting injured see as soon as he gets to keep in a knock the entire team collapses oh yeah definitely Um, but it all goes back to know. The only person who doesn't seem to collapse is Hart and Ralston. Yeah. For some reason, they're the only players that seem to continue to play good when McGregor isn't doing good. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we were 2 1 up. We thought, oh, I might get a first ever win in German soil. Um, but we were, again, overpowered late on by the Germans. Um, here we go, this is what he said about the after the matches. There's a gap between us and the best and he admitted to said I'm not yet at Leverkusen level, but I think that all goes back to the board, Lewis. I don't think it goes to Paul Scoggle. I think it goes back to the board. Not recruiting him, not getting him back. Do you know they should have got him? See when Eddie Howe was announced he's not gonna be the manager, they should have got him in then. Yeah. Done and dusted, announced then yeah. end of April or May, whatever it was, into June, get all the players needed then, coach with them, and then you'd have another decent chance. Even see if you never got I can't the believe though that we allowed Eddie Hill to do something like that. So, like, if a manager just sits, think, says, I'm, I, I'm, go I'm just going to take eight weeks before I make my decision. So it's, it's, it's a board basically saying, I take your time, go on a holiday or something like that, we don't care. That's basically what they're saying. That, that Up and, uh, if he could have played Champions League football, for Celtic if he'd done well, which I'm glad he didn't do us. Oof. But no, but no, he'd rather play a relegation battle with Newcastle United. <laughs> yeah. Thank God we got big boss to call there. Yeah. Um as the BBC say, um uh, Porius defence and lack of depth definitely we'll discuss that there. Um the numbers are stark and Celtic conceded the most goals thirteen in the thirty two team Europa League group stage. But that's the way Postco wants to play, he wants to play attack. But I was saying about my, my match reaction stuff. You've got the you've got the attack spot on perfect, right? But see if you've got that yeah. attack spot on, get it the same way the defence. Get it really tight. Get you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Get it really tight with like a yeah. Starfield with back, um, Carvic at the back, Juranovic, Ralston. Um, so yeah, that would be you got to get that the same. You got to get it on the same level. Um, only three other clubs, Fens Faros, who props up Celtic section, Royal Antwerp and Lega Warsaw, and to double figures. On their travels, Celtic um, get, uh, obviously put three, uh, got three goals against them again. Real Betis, two at Fens Faros, and three in Leverkusen. Yeah, they took three full points from two meetings with the Hungarians and h held their own in a 4 3 thriller, thriller away at Real Betis, which we should have won. We should have won that one uh, before on yeah. the brink of a famous win in Germany. Obviously, the lack of depth we've discussed there, Lewis was exposed in the closing stages because you look at it. We brought Albin Ayeti on, which he's not needing the plans. He's definitely in the bloody, the bloody bin for January. Whoever gets him, just get him out. 
Scunthorpe United, take him there. <laughs> um, uh, Mikey Johnson, he's had plenty of chances. I know I've probably said, I've probably talked about my head saying, um, you know, oh, he's turning, he's turning the best player in the bloody world. He's had far too many chances at this club. Um, and that's come to this level where we have to play him because of, like, a depth. Um, yeah. So, that's it. That's it, really. Got to, got to invest in January. The board must back Ange. The fans have backed them all the way, as I keep saying. Um, and get the direct debt fan because if Jota is injured, from some reason it gets injured, let's not touch wood, as Mr Gordon would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm <laughs> um, He doesn't get injured. Uh, but if he does, we have we have Mikey Johnson to replace him. That's it. We have no one else there. Um, yeah. I don't know if if you I I don't know if the stats uh, the unanimous can play there. Hopefully not. I won't see him because then we're missing hundreds of places. But we don't have any more after that. Mike, let's say Mikey Johnson's getting injured. Who are we going to play then? You know what I mean? Then you got to strengthen yeah. in January. It's a really crucial month. That's why I've named this the podcast. A really crucial month for Celtic. Uh, in this um, season for Ange, um, you know the subs came on within a four minute spell, and Celtic conceded three goals in that time. Remember that time end of the to that to end yeah. of the game. You know there's signs of improvement, and there's I know we keep saying negatives and all that stuff, but there's definitely signs of improvement. Unless you know, obviously the defence yeah. is the like weakness. You know, don't expect Paul to suddenly change tact tactics. The Australian imposes an attacking philosophy and is pleased with the way the team have gone at European opponents in, the deb- in its debut season. I mean, alright, we lost 3-2 to Leverkusen, but, you know, we're out there playing against top four in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Um, Seville, we played well. Betis, um, I think they're mid-table, aren't they, La Liga, yeah? I think they're mid- mid-table, La Liga. I think they're um, Overall, Celtic's tally of 10 goals scored in the group phases, bettered by only five teams, including Leverkusen. I pause because Celtic have proved... Yeah, well, everything, right? What? Is this everything? Yeah, run about, oh, yeah, just run about. Uh, but we're going to talk Something about... Something has to make an entry early exit. Next time, though, I'll be able to stay on for the full episode. Yeah, two sec. And... Two sec, okay. Yeah, it was. Anyway, um... Uh, Europa Conference League, guys, I was discussing there. Um, two seconds. As I was saying, guys, Lewis um, has to go, so I'm going to finish the podcast off myself. We've got five, six minutes left anyway. Um, although the visit of Conference now, um, we've got to talk Conference League. Also, although the visit of Real Betis uh, to Glasgow next month is a dead rubber, Celtic can console themselves for further European Cup football in the new year. Uh, when they are playoff against a Europa Conference run up next February and they're into the last 16. Well, the conference is the, the lesser of, obviously, of Europe, uh, UEFA's three club competitions. It still boosts the likes of Roma, Feyenoord, Tottenham, FC Copenhagen, Union Berlin. Celtic will potentially be bolstered, uh, uh, bolstered by the new rivals in January. Definitely. Get the get the crucial signs in January, Tati and others in media, get the players in they need, back Ange, get Ange the players he needs it in, and you know, we've got a real chance of going deep into this European tournament and it's not to be sniffled at, sniffed at, because you know, it's still, it's still a European competition at the end of the day, um, you know, you know, we, it's still, you know what I mean, it's still a European competition, um, but yeah, um, Celtic Hearts, it's going to be a very tough game, um, both sides in form, Hearts obviously, the start of the season, the league campaign, 31st, uh, end of July, yeah, we didn't have time, we did we got rushed into the game, we said Postcoggle, you know, his first league game, we didn't have enough depth, you know, we didn't have that, jeez, we're lacking really much depth there, uh, Starfield got thrown in, Kyogo got subbed on, we lost that game 2-1, but in August, League Cup, we turned it on, we won 3-2, it wasn't, on, the, on paper, it doesn't, oh, it's a tough game. No, Celtic dominate that game. But Celtic have been on great form in the league, no doubt about that. But um, the main point is um, Hearts are in good form. They'll be looking to get something because, you know, they won't go out there, defend. They want to show, they want to prove something. Celtic, they want to do as well, you know, and they, they, they want to keep fighting, um, staying up there, 
keep going with Rangers, keep batting it out because you know you cannot lose this four point gap until it comes something bigger. That's what happened last season. Yeah, um, so it's going to be a very tough game Thursday night. I'll be going to it, guys. Make sure you stay tuned to the channel for the match day vlog. Um, so it's going to be a very tough game. Um, Starfelt, I don't know if he'll be back. I've not heard the manager. Rogic, the same. Um, I'm surprised if he comes to come back for starting. Maybe on the bench, I do not know. Um, but we'll see. If he starts the same line I was on Sunday, um, I think it's going to be a lot tougher. I mean, Aberdeen are a tough opponent, but it's going to be a lot tougher because, you know, McCarthy in midfield is not the fastest. He's not at the tempo with the, you know, the kind of pace Andrew wants him to play at. Um, Obviously, injury proven, injury or um, but if you got that front three, I think you could obviously score. But the defense is still there, you know. We can make mistakes, give penalties away. I know it wasn't a penalty on Sunday, but you can still give them away, um, which we did against Hatch in the League Cup. Um, and because that slack you go at the end of the game, luckily it didn't matter. But you've got to look at it, you've got to stick tight, you've got to. Put a professional performance out there, just show what you're made of basically, you know, show the other teams, you know, we're not here to mess about, we're not just here for a rebuild, we want to win, we've got to win. Um, you've got to win to keep up with Rangers of course, um, they're away to Hibs tomorrow night and then Thursday also a Celtic game, so, um, got to keep up the pace definitely. Um, Going by starting 11 nights going to be the same as Sunday, I don't think there are any changes, as I say, I don't know about Starfelt and Rogic. If they come in, fantastic, because they might be training, I don't know, I don't know if he can tune yet, I don't know. But, if they're fit and ready, put them on, because he's known to be throwing players in before. Um, Starfelt in July, put Kyogo in for his first appearance, so yeah. Um, I don't see why, um, but if they're fit and ready, yeah, definitely. Um, the defence has got to be crucial on Thursday night, Hearts are a very good side, they'll look for something, definitely. Don't know, as I say, they won't stick for a draw. If they go for a draw, that's fair, you know, get a point at Parkhead, that's that's very good but they want they want to get three points they want to show something and it's a very close very close on the table Celtic win they'll go close at the Rangers go open that wee gap up between themselves and Hearts if Hearts win they'll move up by second and they'll get a couple of points clear of Celtic so it's a very crucial game all together um, I just want a professional performance um, a couple of goals into the bar can be great just to you know a second half especially Aberdeen it was very tense because we only had one goal in between it uh, unanimous cleared off the line we got to be on. We got to be on. We got to wake. We got to be waking on Thursday night. Um, throughout the game in the second half against Aberdeen in the first half, we're so tired. Uh, uh, but you know we did. We we're like this walking sleep, sleep walking basically. You know backing off players until they get in the box, letting them cross the ball. Simple passes that didn't work out. You've got to get better than that. Um, I know we came off a very tricky, a very well you know what um, Leverkusen defeat, but. Still, you know, it's a very crucial game in a month. Not just a game, a month for Celtic. Um, I'm going to go 2-0. I don't know if we can keep a clean sheet. Fingers crossed we can. Nice, comfortable win. You want that professional performance uh, to score. Jota to score. And before I get another goal scorer, I would like to see Forrest start. And we, start, we started the bad on Sunday. Wrong choice again. Um... Forrest should have started um, when he came on. Um, maybe a wee bit of difference, you know. He's got, he got that. You can run it. You can run it. The defenders. A bad doesn't. I don't know why. Strange thing is he didn't run it. Defenders didn't take them on, which is disappointing. But um, Forrest does that, and I hope he starts on Thursday night because um, he'll give us good crosses in the box. Maybe not the best, but he'll take the man on. He'll take the man on, um, which is good to see. But I'm going to turn out Jota and I said Kyogo last time, he's definitely drew a goal, I think Kyogo again. Uh, he definitely drew a goal, he's missed a couple of good chances. Uh, Mikey Johnson actually set him up a decent pass um, to finish the game off against Aberdeen. Straight at the goalkeeper though, in the end. Um, but I think that's coming to the end guys. If you have enjoyed the podcast, we lose, please subscribe and like and share the um, podcast out the video. Um, so on to Twitter questions, guys. Um, here we go. Here we go. This is from 
Juranovic extra, who would you who would be your ideal realistic opponent in the conference league? Well we don't actually know they're not um secured for second place, but ideal. Wow. Um I'll take like a team I am not gonna I'm not gonna disrespect any other team because they could put a good performance on. Um I know Antonio Conte isn't getting in long for Tottenham and their players are not playing to standards, but they should be beating Moura. So Moura, they're not I don't think they're gonna get anywhere near like knockout, but they did well. Uh, I'm not gonna dis disrespect any other team. I probably just like a, d a home tie, nice home tie. I think they're still doing away league games anyway. Doesn't matter. Um, a ho no away tie first, in fact, and then a home tie um, for me. Um, can we afford to drop any points in December? No. Sorry about that. Um, that was a good question on the Twitter question. Can we afford to drop any points in December? I can't go with that. No, because, you know, it's a very crucial month for Celtic. If they want to keep up the pace with Rangers, because they're flying at the moment with Gino, with Gino Van Bronckhurst, um, probably only going to get better. No, we can't afford to drop points. It's simple as that. We've got tough games, yes. We've won away before. You've got to keep going. You've got to put the best players you can out in that park. You can't, you can't afford to rest players until January, because... We've not got the depth like Rangers. We've not got depth like you know what I mean. We don't like even go to Leverkusen or any other team. You know what I mean. We don't have depth. Um, so yeah, it's, no, we can't afford. Uh, which Celtic player has without without with Jota has the best trim? I was listening to Jota and he said Forrest. Probably agree with him. Forrest really get the best trim. He's got the best. Um, you can I hear? Um, except from that, I'd probably say, hmm, Kyogo. Yeah, I like it there. Um. Hmm. I'm trying to think of anybody else, I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe Joe Hart. <laughs> Head and shoulders, eh? But anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I went on a scale, Lewis mentioned it earlier on. I was scale 1 to 10. How disappointed are you that Jota doesn't like Iron Brew? Uh, <laughs> oh, disappointed, man. No. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. He thought it was alcohol, but I guess because he's, he's never had it before, you know, he doesn't know what it is. Um, Oh, you know, uh, two. I've got a two out of ten. A two. It's all right. He's still bet. He's still the best life one player ever. Fantastic uh, in the league. Anyway, you know, we need Ryan Kent. Um, where do you see Celtic domestically, domestically, and in Europe after two or three years on the edge? <laughs> That's tough because you know we don't know how the season's going to turn out. Um, you don't know if Celtic going to back Ange. Something could happen. We do not know. Uh, realistically, if Ange stays on the win, just say we win everything this year, right? We win the league title back. Next season, I see us potentially if we have enough players and stuff like that, the board back, even back in next summer. Um, we could go for. Yeah, we're straight in Champions League if we win the league last season. Next this season, yeah. So win Champions League next season. Um, Forty million. I mean, that's something. We could be playing Champions League football. We could be winning the league title, like title, league cups, and all that stuff. Scottish cups. We could be flying under Ange. I really want to see that. Um, I'll make this the last question. What three signings would you make in January? Probably a Tati, Real Tati, really good. He can do different different positions, media, different kind of striker, and hmm, I don't know. I I can't think of an old. I don't know one to be honest, but yeah, I think that's it. But before we go, guys, I was also on that Brendan Higgins um, thing. Yeah, I, we did. Um, the Celtic mind is a, 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 all for Brendan Higgins to not be in the club. He should nowhere near Celtic Park. He's a health and safety hazard, as I said. Um, but I've discussed different guys. What I did discuss Leverkusen Conference League, Aberdeen, Hearts, and, um, you know. Um, Obviously, I said 2-0 Celtic. I don't like really like to do score prediction unless it's like a preview, but I'm going for it, 2-0. Hopefully, it's a good game. Um, it's going to be freezing, but we'll go for it. Um, yeah, that's it. Please, thanks, guys, for watching. Please share the video. It's been a fantastic show with Lewis, and obviously, I've wrapped it up there. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Please subscribe and like. Your support channel has been fantastic. I'll see you guys on Thursday. 
for the match day vlog of when Celtic take on Hearts at Celtic Park. Until then, guys, thanks for watching.